Hello, and welcome to another generic shooter tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over on how to add custom maps to your generic shooter main menu and your map voting selection system. The first thing that you're going to need is a custom map. I went ahead and opened the five rooms map, cut off two of the rooms, and I named it three rooms. This will work with any custom map. There are no requirements to your map. As long as you have a map, this will work. And as long as it's saved, that's important. So once you have your map saved, open up your game instance class. And you can find that by going to your content browser, generic shooter, blueprint logic, engine, BP game instance. Now in the blueprint graph here, make sure you have class defaults on the toolbar selected. Otherwise you won't see your variable settings here, which you'll need to access. Now in this default variable list, drill down to define maps. And you'll, you should see that you have three maps already defined, which is how they're showing up in the menu already. In order to add your map, click the plus sign next to define maps and you'll see another blank element appear. For display name, add in the name that you want your user to see in the main menu when they're selecting your map as well as the map voting screen. For this, I'm gonna type in three rooms. It's safe to add any characters that you want in here, spaces, exclamation marks, whatever you wanna do, that's fine. However, in the next field, URL, you have to type in the name of your map exactly as it exists on the hard drive. So if you saved it with underscore A to whatever, you need to have all those characters in there. So I saved my file name as three rooms, uh, no spaces, no numbers. So that should be my URL. Now for vote image, vote image is what users will see in the map voting screen in, as a preview to your level so they know what they're voting for. If you don't have a vote image, you could leave this blank, but the UI might look a little weird. So I recommend using one that already exists. If you want to make one, I recommend using an image that's around 600 by 120 pixels, 128 pixels. So 600 by 128 uh, will fit your, will fit the UI perfectly. It doesn't have to be that exact size, but you might see some stretching if you don't. So go ahead and I'm just going to use the Stairmaster image, but any image will work here really. Now the next thing you want to do is define what game mode your map supports. For every supported game mode that your map supports, it will show up in that relevant UI. So if you have its support for Team Deathmatch and not Deathmatch, you'll only see your map in the Deathmatch or in the Team Deathmatch screen. And so in order to add game modes, click the plus sign here. I'm going to add two, and I'm going to add Team Deathmatch and Deathmatch. Now due to some weird engine bug, sometimes you won't see your map in the deathmatch list if deathmatch is your first supported game mode I can't quite explain it so if you're supporting deathmatch try to keep it as any other element but but zero and that seems to work just fine uh, now for the voting box here this doesn't really matter this is used internally by the map vote si map vote system so you don't need to worry about that at all and once you've done that in order for your game to be in the official package project for your final release or even if you're just packaging just to test it or playing with friends, you have to add it to the cooking process. And if you go to edit project settings, packaging, you might see a drop down arrow. Go ahead and click that. Otherwise, you'll see a full list of settings here. And what you want to do is find the settings under packaging that says list of maps to include in a package build. Now, I'm going to click this six times because I believe I have six maps yep and I'm just going to add every map I have if you didn't want to cook some maps you can leave some maps out but it's very important that you at least cook the menu map otherwise you won't have a menu and in future versions there will be multiple menu maps for different platforms so make sure you cook all the menu maps no matter what and then go ahead and just keep adding all the maps that you want to cook generally it's a good idea to add every map for testing but uh, it could also increase your cook process quite a bit. So, there you go. Once that is done, go ahead and package a project. And I use Windows 64-bit, but Generic Shooter works across every platform now, which is pretty cool, except HTML5. It will work on HTML5, but the HTML5 web player is a little buggy, so I don't officially support it. But it should work on every platform and it's been tested on every platform except Xbox One. So I'm going to go ahead and package Windows 64 bit and I want to package this onto my desktop uh, just for now. Test package. I hit OK. 
and you'll see that it's packaging and this will take some time for the first uh, package so we'll just go ahead and let that run I'm not going to pause and cut it I want to keep editing of this short and I figure it uh, might be a good idea to show how long it takes to cook because it shouldn't take that long and oh it's a good benchmark tool I guess now if your map has a lot of assets has a lot of textures or if you've imported some of the other marketplace asset packs or you're using the starter content this process could take significantly longer and so that's why the maps I ship are all very basic and only use a few materials because it does really speed up the cooking process if your cooking is taking like two or three hours what you want to do is trim down your content browser and remove all the content that you don't need and because I'm streaming the, the creation of this tutorial let's do a shout out to Azarius and Choinsky in the twitch chat here who have joined us as they watch me create this tutorial and uh, yeah at this point you're pretty much already done you don't have any additional steps everything should work JV the Wanderer says hi as well so shout outs to those guys you will be forever immortalized in this YouTube tutorial another thing about cooking is after the first initial cook when you download the project and you've packaged your project additional packaging should be faster but not by a lot so keep that in mind and with this package version you should be able to send it to other people and play it if you've already set up the steam subsystem you should be able to play it with your steam buddies if they're kind of near you uh, if you have not set that up and you've just downloaded the project you should be able to give this to a friend or somebody on your local network and play it with them now my screen on the bottom right just said the packaging was complete even though that UI looks a little weird and doesn't say that it did I'm gonna go to my desktop and I want to open up test package and you should see a folder called Windows no editor open that up and you should see whatever you named your project an exe file if you open that up uh, you should see your package game for me my game opens up a little big because I'm at a higher resolution so let me set this uh, down a bit There we go. Easier to see. Uh, so you get the main menu, and that's pretty normal. But if you go to Team Deathmatch, you should see your map, three rooms at the end of the list. Pretty cool. And you hit Next, and it should load into your map without any issues. We'll Five, go ahead and start it to four, make sure. Three, two, 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 one. And there you go. So as you see, here's our custom map uh, in a package version and not much work needed to get it all working as you can see it also works under deathmatch as well here's your three rooms and again this will work with any map that you create as long as you define it properly in the game instance class and this will be the way to define your maps for all versions of generic shooter version ambitious artichoke or later and yeah there you go thanks for watching and uh Make something cool.